Well, it's good to have you with us this morning. Thank you for joining us. Uh, for the moment, uh, we're clear of the rain and the storms, but uh, we needed the rain. I'm thankful to get some, but it is good to have you with us today. Welcome to those of you who are listening live stream or in uh, our drive-in church. Those things are still available. Um, I uh, worked through the week uh, during VBS on uh, creation and evolution, and there was one uh, presentation I didn't have time to get in, so you have to suffer through it this morning. It's going to be about fossils, and it's a PowerPoint, but Brother Brian is going to come, and we're going to get started this morning. Well, good morning. I heard that we had five to seven inches of rain in some areas places in our area this morning or last night. We've got plenty of rain and there's supposed to be raining some more today. So let's take our hymnals and get our service started this morning by taking them to 221 and let's all stand. Lead me to Calvary 221. God and Heavenly Father, as we ponder the song, Lead Me to Calvary, I'm so thankful for the testimony of a Sunday school teacher who did just that. And Lord, I'm thankful for the salvation that I have in Christ Jesus, my Lord. Lord, I pray that if there is anyone here today, though we're probably not, not primarily dealing with that, but doesn't know Christ as their Savior, that this will be the day they come to know Jesus Christ because there will be a time when it's ever and eternally too late because 
As you said in your word by the Apostle Paul, behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. None of us have a mortgage on tomorrow, to, to be sure. Heavenly Father, I thank you for answered prayers. I'm looking over at Randy here. Uh, had quite a challenging trip, and he's back safely. Uh, still some loose ends to tie up. We just ask you to intervene for that. And uh, Heavenly Father, uh, some of us... Uh, uh, I know that they're in the congregation who've lost loved ones, and Lord, continue to sustain them during their times of trial. Uh, there's some who are having physical challenges. We just ask you to intervene that, even for my wife, as she goes in for some uh, shots tomorrow to try and relieve some of her pain in her back. We commit that to you. Uh, but most of all, Heavenly Father, uh, we would ask for our friends and loved ones who don't know Jesus Christ as their Savior, that they might come to know him. Uh, Lord, we would pray you bring people into their path or something that they hear. Uh, we think of um, all the materials that have been distributed uh, in our door-to-door -door visitation, and uh, uh, there were nine people who heard verbally the plan of salvation this past week. Uh, Lord, I pray, I, I particularly think of that Muslim man who listened and asked credible questions. I pray you'd work in his heart and his life. I pray the same for the others, but he had very credible questions. We just pray that you'd work in his heart and life and that he'd get saved and that his wife, who's a Catholic, would come to know Christ as well. Uh, Lord, we all have needs that we know nothing of. We just ask you to intervene for that. We ask for uh, the protection of Israel. Uh, we think there's some impending things that's being kept from us that I got from a friend from Israel that uh, you're going on there now. We just ask you to divinely intervene for that situation. And uh, Heavenly Father, we know that there are some who are, are facing uh, COVID challenges, none in my church that I know, but I have friends who are and pastors in Wisconsin who are. And there was a prayer request for one of Peter's friends at work who was challenged by it. We ask you to intervene for that. And uh, so, Lord, we just, uh, we just pray that you would guide and direct in that situation as well. We would pray for our president. Oh, oh how he and the vice president, many of uh, top uh, governmental officials need Jesus Christ so bad. You know, we would ask you to restrain them from the evil that uh, they would do, Heavenly Father, uh, trying to uh, introduce uh, uh, things that are completely... Uh, anti-biblical upside down from from the Lord and uh, Lord we pray that you would help us as believers to be the salt and light that we ought to be uh, many other things on my heart and my life uh, that I lay before you but Lord I don't want to get distracted by any of them we pray that you would use the PowerPoint this morning uh, to convince us if we're not convinced already that Jesus Christ is the creator by him were all things created that are in heaven and the earth visible and invisible all things were made by him and for him and help us to remember that we were made by him and for him and it is by you that our life consists we come to you now uh, with great thanksgiving we want to focus on the songs in jesus name amen 228 were you there 228 <laughs> Sometimes 
couple of things. Uh, some people, if you don't want to shake, just put out your elbow. But the rest of us, greet those folks who are around you. Let them know you're glad to see them. Well, it's good to have you this morning. How many of you would rather be here than stuck in the mud? Let me see you. Uh, uh, just about everybody. I praise God for that. All right. Um, there is a brief deacons meeting uh, after the morning service. It'll be very brief. So, uh, deacons, if you can just meet me up here on the organ side, we can take care of that business right there. Um, on, on, um, it would be on Friday, the August 27th. Uh, how many would you would be interested in a film night showing the film Unidentified? Unidentified. Let me see if we have enough. Okay, there's enough that uh, we'll do that. Uh, we'll have some refreshments and that sort of things. It, it has to do with the uh, UFO phenomenon um, as such. Uh, and um, I just tell you, aliens are demonic manifestation. It's craziness. But anyhow, unidentified. Um, uh, Brian will announce it in a little bit here, but um, Barb Jensen uh, was, uh, Dennis, we're going to be here this morning. It's their, we're going to announce their 50th wedding anniversary. So if you know Barbara, you might uh, call and congratulate Dennis for sticking with her for 50 years. But anyway, <laughs> no, or vice versa. I don't know. I love him. I tease him to death, but tease her to death. But anyway, um, uh, years ago, um, Barbara's grandmother had prayed that uh, all of her children and grandchildren would come to know Jesus Christ as personal Savior. Well. There, um, uh, her uncle Leslie had been a holdout for years and years, but uh, he's recently come to know Christ as Savior, and he's being biblically baptized this morning. And so she called me and said, uh, um, uh, we're not skipping our 50th, but uh, she's recording. She's got siblings that live distant places away, so she's there recording his biblical baptism this morning uh, for that. So that's why... They're not here this morning, but she worries about those things, so I promised her I would announce it. Brian? <laughs> All right. Well, it's good to be back. From, well, it's, I need a vacation. If you've got three grandchildren that are nine, eight, ten, nine, and four, and you're with them 24 7, <laughs> and they're always grandpa, 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 it's time for, you know, you come back from vacation for a vacation. But it was enjoyable. We had a good time, and it's good to be back. Let's go to our announcements. Here are uh, our, um, I wanted to do our verse of the year last week. I wasn't here, so I'm going to do it this morning. And that is, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labors are in vain in the Lord. And that's 1 Corinthians 15, 58. So our verse today is but ye brethren are not in darkness that 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 day should overtake you as a thief ye are all children of light and the children of day are and we are not of night nor of darkness therefore let us not sleep as do others but let us watch and be sober for they that sleep sleep in the night and they that are that be darkened are darkened in the night 
Let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for, a, for, the, for an helmet, the hope of salvation, for God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as ye also do. Who can tell me besides Mason? Can any other? Mason, what is it? That is correct. Good job. All right. Thursday night is tell door-to-door -door visitation continues in our neighborhoods. Anyone interested should be here, ready to depart at 6:30. Pray as packets be are delivered. So we had 48 tracks this week. Go out. Uh, 20 of them were not at home. Seven rejections and nine gospel presentations. Amen. So that's a good day. Um, um, what was I going to say about that? Yeah, so if you're not going to come, please be praying for it at least. Please, we really support your prayer in that because we go out as God's missionaries to do this work and we really want to reach people for the gospel of Christ. It's, look at our times we're living in it. It's so important, so that's why we do that. So at least if you're not going to come out, pray for us as we go out. All right, uh, August 21st, 8.30 a.m., men's prayer breakfast, cost $3, sign up if intending. Of if attending, invite others to join you for the great fellowship and food. August 24th, 7 p.m., deacons meeting at the church, the 28th Alpha Women's Center Ride for Life. Get ready to ride and or sponsor others. Pick up the sponsor forms and begin collecting pledges if you plan to ride. Um, I'm going to be riding, pastor's riding, so if Jack will be riding, Sal will be riding, so if you're not going to ride, please find us and support us. It's always a good ministry. It's the best ministry ever. September 11th, Sunday School Picnic. Mark your calendars in our missionary spotlight. Uh, Pastor Mark Reno is the director of what ministry? The Conversion Center. And they print and ship tracks various places. Name two countries. Recent boxes have been sent. Guatemala and Panama? Venezuela. Name three states they have traveled in the month of July. Name three states they have traveled in the month of July. New York, Alabama, Wisconsin. They've also had to come through Illinois to get there. <laughs> All right, the, um, the Riffle family in Japan have been working to get the gospel out. Have they seen results? Yes, they have. Although one elderly missionary is retiring, what exciting news is there for the next year? Two new families are coming. Since April broke since April broke her arm, tell me what is happening with her arm now. Healing, but still pain. Healing, but still painful. What is the, their prayer request about the church building? Space. More space, and that's always a good thing. Pro-life uh, proclaimer provides updates for what Wisconsin missionary? Baptist for Life. Who is the director? Andrew Burrow. Bonus question. Name two directors of Wisconsin pro-life ministry who have health need to be praying for them. Holly, Holly Hickey. Hickey. And who's the other? And Andrew Burrow. Andrew Burrow. And that is that. All right. We're going to take our hymnals to 165. 165. Oh, God. 
mention there is a choir rehearsal at 5 o'clock tonight. 5 o'clock tonight for rehearsal. And we go to Sunday school attendance. Last year, 51. Last week, 76. Today, 56. And 100% in elementary. Happy birthday goes to Norman Kinski and Tim Burligain. And happy anniversary goes to Dennis and Barb Jensen for their 50th. Anyone have a spiritual birthday? Sarah. Nice. How many years do you know? Nine. Nine years of new birth. Amen. Anyone? And Jackie, what day? This week? This month? How many, how many years? Hey, man, there's an oldie. She's old. I think she's probably older than me. Spiritually. Of course, spiritually. Of course. All right, we're going to um, have a prayer time, and then Pastor and I are going to minister. So we're going to 348. Our Heavenly Father, I want to do thank you, Lord, for providing for this ministry. And I do ask, Lord, that you'd continue to strengthen Pastor and uh, give him health, uh, give him clarity of mind and clarity of thought, give him wisdom from, from daily tasks. We ask, Lord, that you would be with Linda, as she was going to get that shot this week, Lord, that it would make a difference and give her the relief that she needs. We'd be also asking for anyone else who has a physical need this week, Lord, that you could, because we know you can, heal them, and that would be our desire, uh, Father. But if not, then use the doctor and the wisdom there and just bring relief to them. We'd also be asking, Lord, for our body of believers that in this wicked time we're living in, I've never saw it in my 61 years of life of what's going on in our country that Lord you'd restrain evil and bring revival in the hearts of folks help us to be strong in our faith and stand strong in our faith as the day is approaching as we listen for that trumpet Lord in Jesus name we pray amen yeah we'll do first second last Does Jesus care when my heart is pain too deeply for mirth and song? As the burdens press and the cares distress and the way grows weary and long. Oh yes, he
totally spontaneous, by the way. We had nothing planned this morning, so then. Right. Take your hymnals to 213. I did forget to mention your track that's in your pew there. Grab one of those, passport, take it this week, and give it to someone. All right, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, as we gather here together this morning, how thankful we are for the Lord Jesus Christ who did die on the cross of Calvary and how thankful we are that um, getting to heaven doesn't have anything to do with our uh, national heritage, doesn't have anything to do with our parentage, doesn't have anything to do with our wealth, doesn't have anything to do with our works. It's a free gift provided for us by the Lord Jesus Christ who loved us and indeed gave himself for us. So Heavenly Father, I pray that uh, we who are believers would be uh, the true ambassadors for the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, get out uh, the word uh, for those who don't know Christ as their Savior so that they might have an eternal home in, uh, in heaven if they call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. Be with us now this morning uh, that we might not be deceived by the world, what they teach in relationship to evolution. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, the fossil record. There's a lot of lies that are being told about, uh, about the fossil record, and I wanted to set those straight. As I mentioned to you, each night I did things on creation and uh, exposed the lies of evolution. Uh, and so uh, I had one more that I thought was important to do, even though I had four more that I couldn't get to, not enough time. But this is the one that I wanted to share with you. But I'm going to start with a little bit of levity as we begin. I got, uh, I got a question for you. Who was the shortest man in the Bible? Just think about that. 
Now, let me just tell you, there's two possible answers. Job chapter 2, verse 11, it says, Now uh, when Job's uh, three friends heard of all this evil that was come upon him, they came every one of his, uh, from his own place, uh, Eliphaz the Temanite and Bildad the Shuhite and Zophar uh, the Namanite, for they had made uh, an appointment together to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. So, uh, the answer is either uh, Bildad, because he was Shuhite, or, oh <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you'll think this one is as nuts. I like this one. Uh, Peter slept on his watch, so. <laughs> All right, enough of the foolishness. Um, you know, I've collected fossils for years. Uh, when I grew up uh, in Oxford, Michigan, was the largest gravel pit. I believe that it was in the world at the time. It was called American Aggregates, and uh, I was able to find all kinds of rocks and fossils uh, there at American Aggregates. Uh, but there's two worldviews when it comes to uh, the interpretation of the fossils. And if you have your Bible, you can follow along here. Uh, we're going to look at 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 3 through 7. 2 Peter chapter 3, uh, verse 3 through 7 is the basis of the whole presentation, though there'll be a few other scriptures that relate to it. It says this as it begins, know this first. And I believe we're living in these last times. Know this first, uh, that there shall come in the last days scoffers. Well, I'm going to stop there for a minute. Don't you see the scoffers all around? Uh, scoffers against the biblical morality, scoffers against biblical marriage, scoffers uh, uh, against uh, a diligent work, but last day scoffers walking after their own lust. That doesn't just mean sexual lust, it means their own desire, wanting to do their own thing, whatever the realm might be. And saying, uh, where is the promise of his coming? Uh, for since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue, I'm going to move that pointer out of the way if I can. Um, all things continue as they were. I've got to go back one. Um, since the fathers asleep, all things continued as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willingly are ignorant. The truth is there. The truth of the fossil record is there. The truth of the flood is there. The truth of God's creation of there is there. For this they are willingly ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the waters, whereby the world that was then being overflowed with water Perished. What's that? That's the global flood. The global, not local area floods, global floods. It says, but the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Uh, scoffers. Scoffers choose to ignore the evidence that is so clearly presented in God's Word, number one, and in God's creation, number two. Uh, they deny the biblical creation. We saw this all last week. Number two, they deny the global flood. Number three, they deny the coming judgment of God. Now, uh, turn with me also to Joshua uh, and chapter 4, uh, verse 1 through 7, it says, And it came to pass, when all the people uh, were clear, passed over Jordan, that the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Take you twelve men out of the people, uh, out of every tribe a man, and command ye them, saying, Take ye hence out of the midst of the Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood, twelve stones, and ye shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place 
where ye lodge this night. Uh, it's verse 4. Then Joshua called the 12 men whom he had prepared of the children of Israel, and out of uh, every tribe a man. So he took one out of each tribe, making 12. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God, the ark of the covenant, the Lord your God, into the midst of the Jordan, and take ye up every man uh, of you a stone upon his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of Israel, and uh, this may be a sign among you uh, that when your children there ask, uh, uh, ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What meaneth these stones? Then ye shall answer them uh, that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, wherein it passed over the Jordan, and the waters of the Jordan were cut off, and the stone shall be a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. I'm going to use that by way of application, asking this question, what, uh, what's the meaning of these stones? And I'm going to apply it to uh, the fossil and the fossil record. And uh, here we have, um, right here, there are 12 uh, they say, uh, they claim from oldest to youngest that there are 12 layers. Now, it, you'll see that it's completely a lie, and you'll see in just a moment I'm going to repeat myself several times. The only place that this geologic column exists is in textbooks. Okay, it, do, it doesn't exist in reality. But uh, when I was in um, uh, the university uh, studying geology, they drill this on the geologic column here. And so you have the name here, and we'll go over this more, but uh, you, you have uh, down here the pre-Cambrian and the Cambrian, um, and uh, it all goes all up all the way of these names. And then supposedly these are the oldest fossils, and uh, these are uh, 4,500 million years ago, and so on up to the time now. That's, that's what they say. And uh, the Great Flood would have been in this uh, um, Permian layer right here, supposedly at uh, this long ago, which is a, bunk of bu a bunch of bunk, as, as we'll see. Um, Satan's a counterfeiter. That's all I want you to know, is Satan is clearly a counterfeiter. Uh, everything that God does, um, I will be like the Most High. That's what he said. I will be like the Most High. And, and Satan is the master counterfeiter. Uh, he constantly wants to counterfeit God, to be like God. And I look at the Grand Canyon. I've seen the Grand Canyon. I've been to the Gan Grand Canyon. I say, what a memorial, a great memorial uh, of what God did. This is the result of the great flood. Um, Got to back up one here. There's two different worldviews, and we hit this uh, nightly when I was teaching on creation. There's the naturalistic view, or the naturalism view, and that's where you view everything over here by a science falsely so-called, and then there is the supernatural view where you view everything according to the Bible. And I've taught you all these years that I've been here that the Bible tells us, and if you remember it, say it with me, the Bible tells us what's right, what's not right, how to get right, and how to stay right. We are to use the Bible as our level, as our measuring stick of what's right and what's not right, how to get right and how to stay right. Um, the geologic column, as I mentioned to you, is found only in textbooks. And I'm just here to prove that to you today, that the geologic column is actually a lie. Uh, it doesn't exist. Uh, the rock, the strata, the shale, the limestone. So uh, here uh, you have the, the rock strata, supposedly, that's there. These are the different names on the left-hand side. Paleozoic, Metazoic, and Cenozoic, it's all uh, that's grouped into three different, and then it's broken down into these 12, and then they say that these are supposed to be the index fossils that are there. 
Uh, these are supposedly the index fossils and the number of years that are there as we'll see as we go along and as we try and interpret the book. The age, see, I circled the age there, how many millions of years ago over there. And then the, the time period that these supposedly took place, um, uh, Ordovician, um, uh, Ordovician, excuse me, Ordovician there. And uh, so that's, so uh, they teach, and then the index fossils, of course, uh, the trilobite. Uh, the trilobite is supposed to be uh, this many millions of years old, one of the oldest ones that's there. Um, uh, the naturalistic worldview is, is uh, very interesting here. It represents the Earth presumed to be 4.6 billion years, um, and uh, through a sequence of uh, geologic ages, one age, two age, three age, this, this build one upon another, upon another, upon another. Uh, the record of evolutionary history of life is what they claim. And they, they show down here at the bottom that there's very simple organisms, and then it moves up to, uh, this is the buffalo. I wish that there would have, would have been a moose, because the moose almost ran into our car, and we almost ran into the moose. But anyway, uh, but anyhow, supposedly this, and it shows supposedly a gradual transition from one species to the next and finally to man. The only problem is, is there are no transitional species. Uh, it just, because God made everything, the Bible says, after its kind. Uh, um, you know, there, there isn't any, you know, uh, transition from uh, monkeys to man, regardless of what they would try. I mean, they tried pilk down man, that didn't work. They tried jab man, that didn't work. They keep trying it, but it just doesn't work. But here is the supernatural worldview. Uh, the Earth is only 6,000 years old. You know, I'll tell you what, scientists and evolutionists are still scrambling. You can see some dinosaur bones that I've got on the back table there that I've collected over the years and some recent ones. But they found soft tissues in dinosaur bones. How can that last for 6.5 million? It can't last that long. Uh, and so it points to a young Earth, but now they're running all kinds of things, trying to make up excuses because it shoots their whole argument. I'll, I'll tell you what, I can answer the whole thing. All of creation was after their kind, and it happened about 6,000 years ago. Uh, and I believe what the Bible says. Rock layers and fossils were formed, here it is, by the Great Flood, which is about 44, 45 uh, uh, 4,500 years ago, 4,400, 4,500 years ago was the great flood. Uh, and so two possibilities. Uh, there is the slow natural process. Then there is the sudden burial. That's the Bible view as you look at it, sudden burial. Two possibilities, millions of years or... Noah's flood, Noah's flood, a naturalistic view, the record of how life evolved on the planet, you know, the geologic column, that's how it happened. Uh, the record of how life survived the great flood, um, and, and so I just, I just believe that. Um, the the uh, survival of the fittest during the great flood, and then of course God took animals into the ark, and uh, then they came off, and then they reproduced the naturalistic view of survival of the fittest over 600 million years. Uh, yes, um, then the naturalistic, uh, supernatural, excuse me, supernatural worldview, the record of how life survived during the flood. We looked at that already. Here's uh, the naturalistic view and the supernaturalistic view. Let's look at that. Fossil record with the two world views. And there's a problem because there's uh, difficulties. What about the abnormalities, which uh, uh, view fits best? Things that aren't normal, things that are uh, not working like this. Let's look at number one, the evidence, the rock layers. The naturalistic views, the layers should be in order. The oldest at the bottom, 
and the newest at the top. That's what they say. Here's a supernatural view. Uh, the uh, flood caused great disorder. Um, there, it isn't like this because the flood stirred everything up. Uh, for more than a hundred years, geologists of all countries have been cooperating in this endeavor, and the total thickness of the stratified rocks now recognized would be 95 miles deep in all the beds where directly superposed, where they were one top of the other. That's how they say it would happen over all these 65 million years. Whoops. Uh, Two-thirds of the Earth's surface, get this, two-thirds of the Earth's surface has only five or fewer than 12 geographic periods in place. 85% of the Earth's land surface does not even, does not even have three of the periods uh, that appear in correct order. Doesn't, doesn't even have it. Um, here, here's what it says. They, if there were a column of sediments deposited continuously since the formation of the Earth, the entire history of the planet would be reconstructed. Now, look at this. This is Earth science. N uh, it says, unfortunately, no such column exists. And in case you didn't believe me, there it is. No such column exists. The geologic column doesn't exist. The only place on Earth these layers can be found consistently and in order is in the textbooks. It doesn't exist any place on Earth. I don't know why it keeps doing this. Evidence number two, missing layers. I'm going to move to him. Missing layers. Uh, the naturalistic pos uh, you know, prediction is the layers should be in this order. The oldest should be at the bottom. But here's what happened supernaturally. The flood came and didn't deposit it like they say it did. Um, the Lewis overthrust, this is in, Monta uh, in Montana. Uh, the Precambrian rocks lie on top of uh, the Cretaceous rocks that are supposed to be five million years younger. Oh! Huh! How does that work? This contradiction is explained uh, by a thrust in which a piece of land 350 miles wide and 6 miles thick, about uh, 10,000 square miles, picked itself up and slid 40 miles to the top of the Cretaceous strata. Not. Uh, and here you have... Uh, how that's happened, it's reversed itself. Down here, uh, this took itself and uh, put itself up there. Hmm. Uh, so here's what's missing. This is the geologic, here's what's missing. All the, the Jurassic is missing, the Triassic is missing. All of this right here is missing. Where's the geologic column? It isn't there. Why? Because of God's flood. Well, uh, here's the actual order. The Precambrian right there. And the Cretaceous there. I mean, look at the order. That's what, this is supposed to be what's expected. That's what's supposed to happen. That's what they say in the textbooks. This is the way that it is. How can you explain that? Well, I'm going to explain it easy. The flood, the fountains of the deep broke up, the volcanic activity, all the stuff, all that's missing there. Uh, would that be a problem for the great flood to have it like that? The answer is no. The answer is no, not at all. I'm going to move again, Tim. Uh, is that a problem for the naturalist? Oh, yeah. It's a real problem. In fact, they don't tell you. 
If you're learning any of that in school or in college, they don't tell you the Franklin overthrust in Texas. So another example, in Texas, rocks 450 million years old, supposedly. I mean, that's what they're saying. This is what evolutionists say. Rocks that are 450 year, uh, million years old lie on top of rocks that are one, uh, 130 million years old. So how did, how did that happen? Um, there's what is happening there. That's what's expected, and this is what really happens. Missing. This is all missing. Uh, is that a problem for naturalism? Yeah, it is. Would that be a problem for the great flood? No, it's not a problem at all. Which worldview fits the evidence best? It is the great flood. It is supernaturalism. And they keep drilling this stuff into the kids. You watch a history channel and they'll drill that into your heads. Evolution, evolution, evolution. Crazy Cat Canyon, Texas. I want to go there, do some exploration. It's located uh, uh, near El Paso, Texas. Scientists have found an um, Ordovacian limestone layer on top of the Cretaceous strata. Evolution supposed the Ordovacian uh, period in this uh, age of sea life and the Cretacean, uh, Cretaceous is the age of the dinosaurs, but they're flipped. They're flipped. Hmm, there's what you have. It's amazing. That's missing. Is that a problem for the evolutionist? Indeed, it is a problem. Would it be a problem for the great flood? Not at all. Not at all. Uh, Grand Canyon. I love the Grand Canyon. My uh, daughter, uh, Sarah, and Tim have some beautiful pictures of the Grand Canyon. Uh, the Grand Canyon presents a, a real problem for evolutionists indeed. Uh, there is a gap between two layers of strata where several geologic ages are missing. But in one place, it has intermixed, interbred layers alternated between the uh, Mississippian and the Cambrian strata, and it drives evolutionists nuts. Um, missing layers there. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's very interesting. The actual fossil order of the Grand Canyon is, is uh, very intermixed. You can see how it's intermixed there. It doesn't follow the geologic column whatsoever. Um, there's stuff missing. Uh, and again, the problem is the naturalist problem. It is not the problem for the creationist. Very clearly. Um, we're coming down to uh, this one. I, I love this one. Uh, human artifacts that have been found uh, that just blow the evolutionists away. Uh, I love some of these that we're going to see here. Uh, these are some of the ones, and we'll explain what they are as we move along. Uh, here we have uh, evolutionists and atheists graduated from Oxford University, 1962, assistant professor of zoology at the University of California, Berkeley, uh, 67 to 69, vice president of the British uh, Humanist Association. He said, if a single well-verified mammal skull were to turn up in a 500 million year old rocks, the whole modern theory of evolution would be utterly destroyed. Well, here's what I think is interesting. While we haven't found a skull as of yet, McDonald was uh, at a loss to explain how a modern footprint could possibly have been cast in um, a Permian strata, which supposedly dates from 290 to 248 million years ago. Do you see the footprint right there? 
How do you explain that? Well, it's because the earth isn't that old. It's because the flood took place about 4,400, 4,500 years ago. The layers aren't like that. Uh, this um, was long, supposedly, this was long before man or even birds or dinosaurs um, existed on the planet according to the thinking of uh, current evolutionary scientists. Uh, man wasn't even alive then. Um, in, in an article uh, that Smithsonian Magazine ran in 1992 about, uh, about the discovery, it was noted uh, that uh, uh, paleontologists call the anorm uh, anormalities problematic. <laughs> a problem, we have a problem. Yeah, we do have a problem, all right. Which worldview best fits the evidence? Well, again, I don't need to tell you, it's the flood. It's the flood. In uh, 1983, uh, we have uh, the director of uh, the uh, Turkestamanian Institute of Geology reported what appeared to be a human footprint in uh, Metazoic strata. Uh, the impression um, resembling in the shape of a human footprint was discovered next to the track of a prehistoric animal. Guess what? Here's a man's footprint. Here's a dino footprint. How do you explain that? Or the Palaxi River in Texas where a man's footprint was on top of a dinosaur's footprint. This next one I just love. Uh, and uh, if you ever get down to Carl Baugh's museum, it's in Carl Baugh's museum, um, uh, we have uh, a metal hammer that was found in London, Texas. Uh, there is the, the hammer uh, and uh, uh, the footprint and... and uh, Oh, Glen Rose, Texas, I already told you about that. But anyhow, here it is. Found by Emma Hahn in June of 1934 in London, Texas. Uh, seashells surrounding the hammer had uh, been dated by carbon-14 at 400 million, old, 400 million years old. Part of the hammer handle, part of the hammer handle had turned to coal. Uh, Carl Baugh, who has spoken here before, Carl Baugh has it in his museum, and uh, supposedly prehistoric man couldn't have built or done such a thing, uh, but uh, they have uh, tested it and found out. Uh, Max Hahn was fishing with his family near London, Texas, when he found a rock um, with wood protruding from it. When the rock was cracked open, this octagonally shaped iron hammer uh, exposed the wooden handle, partially coalified, as we said. Uh, tests uh, indicate uh, uh, it was a, of exceptional quality um, and uh, doesn't rust under conditions uh, that we have. Um, and so that's very interesting. Uh, human vertebrae was found in the Cretaceous sediment in Peru, uh, and uh, man and dinosaurs lived together. They were found together in the same area. What is uh, interesting is, and Zilla also bear tubal cane, look at this, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. We're not talking about prehistoric people who couldn't do anything, who couldn't write. Um, God talks about very clearly that Tubal Cain was uh, a worker in brass and iron. And uh, yet, um, according to evolutionists, man hadn't evolved to that point yet. He could hardly use stone tools. 
uh, textbooks say coal formed uh, 250 to 350 million years ago. And that's what they are pointing at there. Um, human artifacts, I love this one as well. Uh, you have a bell that was found in France. There's the bell that was found in coal in France, supposedly uh, 450 million years ago. And here it is, W.V. Mr. Newton Anderson found this bell inside a lump of coal in 1944. He still has the bell. Now, I haven't checked to see if he's still alive or not, but um, uh, that is an exact picture of the bell found in a lump of coal that by evolutionists is supposedly 450 million years old. I just believe that God is who he said. God said he created the world in six days. The world was created about 6,000 years ago. The flood happened about 4,400 years ago to 4,500 years ago. And uh, all this stuff. Now, over 500 metal spears were found in South Africa in the Precambrian mineral deposit that have been dated to 2.8 billion years old. I don't even want to go, you know what, when they use carbon-14 tests, it, it can't even date that far back. I mean, uh, they only use the dates that they agree with. I, I, I don't have time to go into all the carbon-14 things, but what I'm showing you is uh, that um, <laughs> the evolutionists, are telling you a lie. And uh, gathering these things together, it shows you uh, exactly what they have found. A human artifact, round metal, uh, metal spears in South Africa, tons of them, these spheres that are there. Um, you know, uh, documents, human bones and artifacts found in rock layers that were supposedly hundreds of millions of year old. The title of the book is Forbidden Archaeology. <laughs> Very interesting. Is that a problem for naturalism? The answer is, yeah, that's a problem for naturalism. Is that a problem for the flood? No, that's not a problem for us. And uh, then uh, you have the polystrite fossils. Uh, I came across a similar thing when I was looking for rocks. And if you come to my house, I have a huge head of coral about this big around sitting on my front porch. Uh, when I was in this uh, uh, big canyon in Kentucky, uh, I pulled it out. But a tree just like this going through a number of different rock layers. And, and I asked my granddad, it was my granddad who took us there, I said, well, if all these are different rock layers. How can this tree have grown through all these different rock layers if, if evolution is true? He didn't have an answer and he wanted to change the subject. The tree standing upright through 80 feet of rock strata, okay? And um, the top of the tree is just as well preserved as the bottom, okay? There's no sign of aging or, dec or decay in the tree. Um, huh. Is it supported by evidence? Yeah, um, it is, the great flood evidence. Uh, three possibility conclusions. This tree stood upright for millions of years while sediment layers formed around them. Nah, I'm, I'm going to pass on that. You're going to pass on that? Yeah, okay. The tree grew through hundreds of feet of solid sedimentary rock looking for sunlight. I think I'm going to pass on that. How about this? The trees were buried upright in a great flood. That's me. Well, here it is. Another one. You can see it. Um, vertical tree in coal um, from the textbook. Uh, I forgot to mention that sometimes they are found upside down with roots on the top. 
upright log and buried log? Did they grow upside down for hundreds of millions of years and not grow old? <laughs> I mean, you look at how foolish that is. Uh, dating rock layers. I I'm going to quit now because I want to uh, wrap things up, but how many of you ever heard of circular reasoning? All right. Um, they date rock layers by the fossils that are found in them. And how do they date the fossils? By the age of the rock layer. So circular reasoning. They go round and round and round, and that's all that uh, these uh, next uh, 80 slides would show, and I'm coming about to the end. But I kind of wanted to, to draw this and show you uh, that, you know, creationists are not all wet. For me, and I understand that I'm coming at it as a Christian, for me it's easier to believe that God created the heavens and the earth in six literal days than to believe all of the fantasies and fallacies and fractures in evolution. And God, as we move on, keeps shooting evolution in the foot with all these things that are going on because you will not find the evidence of the hammer and the bell and the metal spheres and the other things. You're not going to find those in the science books uh, that are written from an evolutionary perspective today because you know why? They are censoring the textbooks the same way that they're censoring our news today. Uh, they have their talking points that they are going to support, and anything that does not agree with their talking points, uh, they are going to ignore, shoot down, keep out of their textbooks, and all this. Parents, you've got to do your best with your children and your grandchildren to try and get input into them that evolution is a lie and it is pushed every place. I enjoy watching some of the stuff on the History Channel, but nearly every time that they deal with any of that thing, you know what they do? They fit in evolution because that is the accepted mindset of our day. Why? Because what's the only other alternative? That there is a God and that he created the heavens and the earth. I'm here to tell you today that there is a God and that he did create the heavens and the earth. And I am here to tell you as the same um, God who created the heavens and the earth and the people continue to say all things continue as they were, that there's a judgment coming before God. There's a judgment coming. We shall all stand before the Lord to give account of ourselves. And the only way to be prepared to meet God is by knowing Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now listen, God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Every single solitary one of us is going to die someday. And it's appointed unto men once to die, and after that, the judgment. Now, the point of the matter is, is when you stand before the judgment of the Lord, it's going to be a matter of sin. There's nobody here, nobody here, nobody alive, nobody who's ever lived who's going to be able to stand before God and say, I am sinless. The only one who can say that is the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And so God is going to examine you 
And he's going to find out what you've done with his son, Jesus Christ. Because Christ was the one who was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. And it's his blood that has paid for our sins. So the question will be, are you paying for your sins or are you accepting or have you accepted the payment that Jesus Christ made for your sins? Say, how do I accept that payment that Jesus Christ made for my sins? Believe. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Is there a time you've personally admitted to the Lord Jesus Christ that you are a sinner and that you understand that your sins condemned you, but you understand that Jesus Christ paid for your sins and you put your faith and confidence in Jesus Christ's payment for you, and you've called upon his name to save your soul. That's the only thing that'll get you into heaven. The tragedy is that there's going to be many standing at the great white throne of judgment, and they're saying, Lord, haven't we cast out devils in your name, and haven't we done many mighty works in your name? And you know what Jesus is going to say? Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. They claim that they knew him. But Jesus said, I don't know you. Because it isn't what you do for Jesus that's going to get you to heaven. It is what he has done for you. So now's your opportunity. If you're not 100% sure that Jesus Christ is your personal Savior, you can take care of it this morning. You can pray and ask him to come into your life, forgive your sins, and save your soul. I'm not holding the gun to your head, but I'm praying that the Holy Spirit is convicting anybody who's not saved. Say, well, I don't want to become a Baptist. I didn't ask you to become a Baptist. I asked you, do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let's have our heads bowed and our eyes closed. You could ask the Lord to come into your life this very moment. In your own words, let him know you're a sinner. Let Jesus know that you believe he died for your sins. He was buried and rose again from the dead to pay for your sins. And right now, in your own words, ask him to come into your life, forgive your sins, and save you so that you can go to heaven. Right now, right where you're sitting. Is there anybody say, Preacher, I got it nailed down today. Wasn't sure, but I got it nailed down today. Anybody honestly say that? Can I see your hand? I'll not embarrass anybody. I hope that that indicates that you're all ready to meet the Lord. Heavenly Father, I just believe you're the creator. I believe that you created in six days. Anybody who's a member of First Baptist Church believes the same thing. They've signed that doctrinal statement. I believe that the flood came. And I believe that that's why we have what we have in the fossils. So, Lord, we commit all this to you now asking you to help us to be good witnesses as believers in Jesus' name. Amen. Brian. Hymn number 300, The Savior is Waiting. Let's all stand. Hymn number 300. The Savior is
just a couple of things. If you look in your track right now, I think it's a cool track. It says passport. It looks just like a passport. And then uh, to heaven. So pull that out and give it to somebody. Pull that out. And if you want a color problem, pull them out. There's some different ones on the table. But I want to get some tracks out this week. So pull it out and give it to somebody. Brief deacons meeting after the, the morning service. Uh, right up on the organ side. It'll just be really brief. Uh, this evening, uh, unique. Um, haven't dealt with it in a while, but uh, you and your spiritual gift. Uh, try and figure out what your spiritual gift is. We'll be uh, talking about that. Romans 8 tonight, you might want to come. There'll be study notes, so uh, you can take it home and, and pray over it and look at it and see uh, what the Lord has for you. So let's close in a word of prayer. Uh, Father in heaven, how thankful we are for the word of God. Uh, how thankful we are that um, uh, you are causing all things to consist, to cohere together. That's what the word means. Uh, gracious Heavenly Father, uh, uh, I just look to you to hold me together this week. Give me the strength I need to be the kind of Christian that I should believe, that I should be, uh, and uh, be the kind of testimony I should be, both in my life, but also in, in my lips. And Lord, help uh, these dear folks who have uh, come to honor you this morning in their singing, in their uh, listening to the word of God. And I, I don't know the hearts of everybody, but they're open and clear to you if there's anybody here who doesn't know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Uh, I do pray uh, that they'll come to put their faith and confidence in Jesus Christ because... Uh, there'll be a time when there's no more opportunities. They'll take their last breath in this life, and then death is like cement. Whatever state you go into death, if you're born again, you're with the Lord for all of eternity. If you're not born again, phew, uh, then you're in hell for all of eternity. Well, Lord, I pray that it's the former. And Lord, though I use it often, the ironic blessing it is, my desire on each and every one who's here this morning. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. I would remind you just before you're dismissed that there still is um, uh, the cleansing uh, pumps on the table. So if you're shaking a lot of hands, there's even in the entryway, you might want to put a pump of the stuff on your hands before you leave. God bless you. The invitation's always open at First Baptist. If you have spiritual questions, call me. God bless you. You're dismissed. <laughs>